You're listening to the Inquisitive Wren Podcast, the show that brings you philosophical ponderings of your life from a bird's eye view. Now, here's your host, Shah. Hello, and welcome to the Inquisitive Wren Podcast. I'm Shah, your host. As you all know, I'm very interested in people, mankind, and how we navigate through life, and I am particularly interested in holistic therapeutic approaches. So today we're going to talk about the applied natural therapy, naturopathy, with Debbie Cotton. Debbie is a naturopath and therapist living in London. She is the co-editor of the International Body Psychotherapy Journal, which promotes the exchange of ideas and research within the field of body psychotherapy. Debbie is also the head of clinical education and gives webinars about microbiome health for in vivo healthcare, which is a diagnostics therapeutic company that provides advanced therapeutic formulas and laboratory diagnostics to healthcare practitioners and their patients. We'll discuss the role naturopathy can play in helping many people with various problems and offer you an insight into how science and natural medicine are complementary. So, welcome, Debbie Cotton. Hi, Hi welcome to the show. Me. Oh, it's so lovely to, see lovely to see you as well. So, thank you so much for joining me today. I, I know how busy your schedule is. Um, let's start out with, let's just jump right in. Um, you're in a beautiful part of the country, by the way, aren't you? I'm in Essex these days. Yes. Lovely part of the country. Beautiful. What's the weather like? Oh, not so beautiful today, but... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Raining a bit. A bit dr- yeah, we're not that far away from each other. So um, I want to start out by asking you, what actually drew you to naturopathy? Well, that's a nice question. Um so when I was a, a late teenager, so about twenty twenty one, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, um, a rheumatological autoimmune disease. So and at the time, I went down the kind of conventional medicine route. Um, and the trouble is, a lot of the medication was very heavy, and I was having lots of side effects, and actually getting kind of worse impacts from the medication than I was um, than the disease itself in a way. And I was. I got to a point where I was really, really struggling and I thought there's got to be something else that can help me. And so it was, I found a naturopath myself and, and, uh, and started working through what were the other things that I could do alongside the medication to help me. And I was in a really lucky position. I came off the medications in the end and, and was able to manage a lot through lifestyle and, and herbal medicines and, and other choices, which not everyone can do. But um, for me, that was how it worked out. So that's what drew me in. I just had such a big life changing experience myself that I was I just wanted to know more, basically. Yes. Okay. Interesting. So uh, what would a treatment plan look like with naturopathy? So basically, you know, a, a naturopath or sometimes they're also called functional medicine practitioners these days or um, functional medicine doctors. So, so there's some different names around for naturopaths these days. Um, but basically what we're focusing on is we're looking at kind of the ex- life experiences of how someone has got to the point they have today Um, So whether that's their environment, all of their kind of inputs around them, uh, their kind of the backstory, their genetics, all of the things that could lead to how this kind of organism is, is today in the world and, you know, in relationship to their health. And so the whole idea is then to go, well, what parts of those things can we alter or can we change or can we improve? to try and allow the person to, you know, to flourish as much as possible. And, and that can be things like looking at their lifestyle, their kind of sleep patterns, their working patterns, their food intake. It might be using certain natural medicines. It might also be looking at their microbiome because that's a really big part of their uh, environment internally and externally as well. So 
all of it's really kind of um, looking at the big picture and medications might be a part of that but that's just one part it's really looking about what are all of the things that impact us and our health um, today yes okay so did that then lead you on to body psychotherapy yes yes so when I um, started practicing as a naturopath I had a very big realization that actually you know uh emotional psychological selves play a very very big impact of how we are in the world and how we relate to our own health and how basically our body functions in in relationship to how we feel so I again I just wanted to add more tools to my toolbox and, and that's where I ended up studying body psychotherapy as well to try and really understand all of the different inputs that and things that we can control or sometimes not control um, that can have an impact on our health. Yeah, so that's the uh, complementary part, I suppose. As you mentioned with naturopathy, sometimes it's combined with conventional medicine, and I suppose mm-hmm. psychotherapy is as well. Yeah. Yep. Never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. Thank you for your support. You make this podcast possible. Now, back to the show. Absolutely. So for our listeners, I know a lot of our listeners will be listening because they're either interested in therapeutics, um, so that's why they follow the podcast, or they're interested in psychotherapy. So how does psychotherapy and naturopathy differ? That's a really good question. I, I think the difference... You know, often with psychotherapy, we're trying to explore, aren't we? We're really trying to explore different um, ways we are in the world, our stories, our narrative, um, our experiences, all of these things. And actually, that's very much led by the the client and, and kind of they're really kind of digging in. And the psychotherapist there is just there really as a guide. It's very similar in naturopathy, but in naturopathy, often... Um, we're trying to shortcut things a lot. So often it is like, look, here's some really good ideas. How about you grab these ideas and see how you can run with them? So there's a lot more probably um, uh, therapist-led sort of intervention, I would say. And sometimes I I liken it to, you know, you've got um, psychotherapy, obviously, which is more explorative, but then you've also got the psychological therapies of cognitive behavioural therapy, which is like you do this, you do that, you do that. And I think naturopathy kind of sits a little bit around there. It's like here's some really good ideas and some tools and some techniques or, you know, lifestyle things that you can try and apply. But, you know, so it's that balance between um, doing it yourself and also being kind of offered and guided in the direction as well. I see. Yes. Okay. So, can you tell us, I suppose that nicely leads us into uh, you educating people at Invivo. So mm-hmm. can you tell us a little bit about microbiome health and how that all works? Oh, absolutely. So I'm very lucky uh, these days. I have um, I'm now work as the head of clinical education for Invivo and what Invivo is, is a, it's a human microbiome company. So what they're looking at there is the role that the human microbiomes, because we've got more than one of them, um, and microbiome means the conglomerate of microbes that live within us and on us and how they are really a, a, a an extra organ, really, basically in our body and how they can have a really, really big impact on our health, but also sometimes on disease. So it's really um, in in vivo, we're looking at testing the microbiome. So, you know, you know what you what your organs look like, basically your your gut microbiome or your vaginal or your oral. And therefore, then looking at how can we manipulate the microbiome? And again, that's through, um, you know, lifestyle choices, dietary choices. It might be through the informed use of uh, probiotics, which are healthy bacteria or prebiotics, which are food that feeds the bacteria. But it's really looking at how can I uh, change my internal and external environment in such a way that's more healthful for me. Yes. Okay. So can people approach the company? Do they need a referral or how does it work? They absolutely can approach the company. Um, So uh, Invivo both offers microbiome testing using uh, PCR, um, 
methodology, which, you know, no one would have heard of PCR before the last two years, <laughs> but uh, it's a DNA technology to, to kind of test the amount of microbes. And um, to, to access one of the tests, you do need to go through a healthcare professional, and that could be a naturopath, a nutritional therapist, it might be a, a normal doctor or a functional medicine doctor, but all of our supplements that are also very microbiome orientated are available as well um, through uh, different channels and through us. So um, we just say with the testing, it's always good to have a guide, a kind of someone to guide you through your microbiome. Otherwise, it can be a lot of data and it can look a little bit scary and overwhelming sometimes, I, but it's actually really great data. I could imagine. Uh, just the jargon alone for a lot of people. Mm. I mean, I had to do some research myself before our interview, of course, um, which is a part of my job, really. But I just want to uh, point out that this company, Vivo is actually a B Corp and carbon neutral company, which is really that's exciting. Right. Yeah, and that's what drew me to them. I you know, Shah, we've known each other for a yes. long time, actually, and we used to work yeah. together at, um, on Portobello Road. And, you know, I've always loved working one-on-one -on -one with patients. And uh, I was always, oh, I don't know if I'll ever go working for a company, but I really loved In Vivo's ideals. I loved them being B Corp. I loved the fact that, you know, they put people and the planet before profit, which is one of the biggest things mm -hmm. with the B Corp. Um, so it felt really aligned with my values to kind of go, okay, I am going into the retail industry, but actually I, I feel I can do this with heart and I can do it in such a way that actually this could really make a difference to people's lives. Yes. So, um, so no, I'm very much enjoying it. Excellent. And while staying true to yourself, as you say, your core values. And it's, I think it's interesting that we are, in fact, therapy it's an odd business because it is a business yeah. and people don't often want to see, I mean, should we be paid for our work? Should we, you know, how much should we all work on the NHS? It's there's all that conversation happening still with healthcare. Uh, but yeah. as we know, science, you know, healthcare has always been private, both private and uh, the public sector. But in preparation for this interview, I read uh, an article which was very interesting by Mark Mimi uh, et al. So there were other people in it. It's called Microbiome Therapeutics, Advances and Challenges. And I'm just going to read this quickly because it's excellent. It says, um, a major focus of human microbiome research has been studying the bacteria in the gut. And I'll, mm -hmm. I'll come back to that because I actually saw you for that recent once. I don't know if you remember that, um, <laughs> which represents the largest community, both in terms of abundance and diversity. Initial colonization occurs at birth mm -hmm. and the mode of delivery, vaginal or cesarean, influences the founding community. Early life events, which, you know, is ping for any psychotherapist, uh, yes. such as transition in diet and antibiotic use, which I found really intriguing, shape the volatile infant microbiome. So it starts from quite a young age, uh, which stabilizes yes. with age. The composition of the adult human gut microbiota is generally dominated by strict anaerobes. I hope I said that right. Uh, and members of the firmicutes, which I don't know a lot mm -hmm. about. But excellent paper there. You know, well, I mean, the whole purpose of research is to get varying uh, viewpoints. But everything I saw was very positive about microbiome therapy. So any thoughts on what Mark and his colleagues found out? Yeah, so basically, you know, when we're looking at the microbiome, it it varies dramatically from country from cultural groups across the ages and those sort of things but there are some similarities in which you know we have um, basically a population of healthy bacteria that should be living in harmony with us most of the time and if that population is robust and happy and you're feeding them you both get kind of benefits out of it they get a place to live and they get food and we get lots of immune benefits and also, in like you mentioned, in children, you know, the microbiota is actually really important for things like brain development, nervous system development. Uh, it has to come in at appropriate time for those things to happen. So, and it's so easy, you know, a lot of the uh, previous kind of thoughts around the microbiome was germ theory. It's like if you've 
you get this sort of germ and we've got to knock it out and we've got to kill it. But actually, really, when we pause and take a step back, it's actually how is our community in our gut or wherever it might be? Is it a healthy community? And if it is, it's going to keep those pathogens at bay. It's going to keep your immune system healthy, all of those things. And this is then where we go out to the bigger picture of what keeps that community happy. Well, you know, a healthy diet, interactions with nature, interactions with pets, um, you know, the type, like you mentioned, the type of birth that one has had and all those sort of things. So, yeah, it's really interesting. I think it's we're now getting to a point as we are in kind of climate change and things like that, really realising that it's all these different communities, environments we really need to tend to and take care of, the ones in us, on us and around us. Yeah. So. Podcasting can be a minefield when you're first starting out. So it was really important that I find the right partners. The team at Buzzsprout is passionate about helping you succeed. Join over 100,000 podcasters already using Buzzsprout to get their message out to the world. Follow the link in the show notes to let Buzzsprout know that I sent you and you'll get a free Amazon gift card if you sign up for a paid plan. You also support the show. Now, back to the show. Absolutely. And so, you know, working with things like climate change is is extremely important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, Debbie, if you had to fly above anything, you know, mm-hmm. I love birds because they, they just have the best <laughs> view. If you had to fly above anything, have you ever had to do that? You know, overcome something in life or anything mm-hmm. that's become you needed wings to get over? Oh, good question. You know, I haven't, I guess, um, you know, life hasn't been without my own mental health struggles. Um, So, you know, I've needed to kind of uh, do my own therapy journey along the way as well as well as you heard my own naturopathy journey. And I still have to dig back into those things and really um, ground myself in the earth and 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 that I'm a member of the community and and the roles that I can play um, so yeah I, I'd say my own mental health anxiety and and a bit of depression is it, something that I, I have struggled with and and still have to take care of myself around as well as my you know my arthritis as well so yes excellent it's really inspiring you know for people as well to hear that and uh, this is an odd one, but, you know, I like to mix it up. If you could live in any decade, past or present, oh. what would it be? Oh. And why? Oh, goodness. Why would I? Oh. I don't know. I'm, I'm quite happy in the decade we're in. Maybe just turning the clock back, I don't know, 80s, 90s, back where we were. And maybe influencing some of the decision and policy making around fossil fuels, around coal, around climate change. If I could get back a bit earlier and say, hey, let's take more notice sooner, I think, you know, that would be an amazing thing to do. But, yeah. 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 But I think we're also in a very um, privileged decade at the moment as well. So. But, you know, you're still looking at humanity, even in that answer as well. <laughs> so, um, you know, we with the work I do, it's combined as a spiritual and everything else. There's something in that, you know, I, I, <laughs> your thoughts around how we're born, what we're born with and why we tend to, got an itchy nose there, why we tend <laughs> to um, choose our power somehow. But you're yeah. still... Yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah, I I don't know. I think for me it's um I don't know, it's that thing of humanity and also nature. It's you know, we've we're so interconnected and I just feel quite a big responsibility for my role uh as all of our roles in our communities and um from the micro ones to the macro ones, I guess. Yeah. So. Good. So just Going a little bit back to your work with the Mm -hmm. body psychotherapy, Mm -hmm. uh, have you found any difference the past couple of years? uh, I will just say with something like hypnotherapy, 
Uh, mm-hmm. It's um, people are still looking, but it's dying down a little bit. And I, it, not that people aren't using it as much, but there's so much available: free apps, the internet, mm-hmm. YouTube. So people are going to that. Uh, but when they want something serious, like stopping a phobia or stopping smoking, they do seek help. Mm-hmm. What about with psycho, your body psychotherapy? <clears throat> what I found very hard over the pandemic, and I wonder if many other people have as well, was the lack of physical contact and uh, with other people. And, you know, online sessions are amazing, you know, because you can, it, there's so many benefits to kind of being in your own home and you staying in your own home, but actually it misses so much and especially that really all important human contact. And uh, I feel that, you know, now people are coming out the other side of the pandemic, there is a real hunger and need for face to face and human contact. Even myself, I know at the moment, if I want to see anyone, I want to see them in the flesh, please, because it's, is there's just something that's so important for me there. And so, yeah, yeah, I, I, I do feel that, uh, yeah, it's, it's making a full turn. Yeah. Uh, yes, I would agree. Uh, and a lot of people do want that face to face back again. It's, um, mm. I know a lot of therapists who are during the pandemic, they've either lost a space because the place closed down and now they've got to make a choice. Do they rent a new space or continue to work from home? Because some uh, companies are offering a lot of online therapy. Yeah, yeah. At the moment, lots of it. So, yes, I I suppose there's a space for both. Yes. But, yes, as you say, human contact, which is really the basis of our training with therapy. You know, you as a body psychotherapist and Mm. Myself as well, uh, not body psychotherapy, but we use all of it. And we look at people, we see yeah. their movements, everything from head to toe. It tells us everything. So we are yeah, missing. Absolutely. And I think we miss, don't we? Like even now, Shah, I'd love to be in the same room with you. <laughs> like it's that thing. Me of, too. Oh, the, the feeling that comes I know, with I know. Yeah, the embodied presence. So Really missing yeah. that as well. So just a few more quick questions. If people wanted to get hold of you as well, mm-hmm. I know you've got a website, debbiecotton.com. Does that mm-hmm. encompass all of your work? That encompasses all my private work, um, but my work through InVivo is 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 kind of all through InVivoHealthcare.com. Yeah. So that's where, for any of my more prof- um, microbiome associated work, that's where I am. Excellent. And you know, I did want to touch on this. I know you like to do things for fun, so you mentioned to me <laughs> things like foraging and BMX. It's yes. fantastic. Are you still able to go out and do? Yeah, so um, I absolutely love gardening and foraging. I'd have to say, though, with the weather in the last kind of couple of months, the, my garden's kind of looking a little bit neglected, though. But uh, I do love getting out foraging, especially looking for kind of local and native herbs or different flavors. Or I just find it's a really mindful activity, you know, identifying plants and mushrooms and making sure I've got the right species and and then using them in my cooking and my food or concoctions that I'm making. So I love foraging. Um, and BMXing is a, a kind of a newish sort of um, hobby for me and my family, actually. We're all doing it together. So uh, so I know you enjoy foraging, but you were saying that BMX is a new sort of new thing that you and your family are doing. Yeah, it's my son, who is now seven, uh, has been doing it for a couple of years. And we I realized both my husband and I were sitting on the sidelines watching. I went, actually, that looks really fun. And that's something we could be doing together more as a family. So uh, yeah, so we're both being brave. We're all being brave <laughs> and giving BMXing a go. Have to say, I'm absolutely addicted and hooked. And it's just really nice as an adult to kind of come back to a new hobby, something that's very different and you have to learn a new skill set and um, something that's really unrelated to the other things that I do. And I, yeah, so I must admit, I'm really enjoying it. So I'm- I've got all my fingers and toes so far, so let's keep it that way. 
<laughs> Very brave. But what you're saying <laughs> is so important. I'm sure a lot of listeners can relate to that. When you're doing a particular job, it's nice you, and you must have something very separate from that. And it's work-life balance, really. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's a, uh, that is an excellent segue out from your work to go foraging <laughs> and BMX. It's totally different from the work you do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that helps to maintain mental health as well. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, uh, so Debbie, with the bird's eye view, mm-hmm. what would you carve into stone? Oh, can you carve into stone as in around life or? Could be anything, whatever you think. Oh, I don't know. I just, I would carve into stone, I guess, the importance of connection, of family, of community, um, connection with oneself, connection with nature, I guess. So I think connection would be the uh, the key for me. Wow, that, that is beautiful. But it also touches upon the fact that that's what we're lacking a lot of at the moment. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And we we do we do need that connection, don't we? Yeah. Um, I, it's vital. It is vital. I wanted to just. I always try and put in a little quote that's relevant to my guest, and I found one by Max Planck from 1932. It says, "Science cannot solve the ultimate mystery of nature." And that is because in the last analysis, we ourselves are part of nature and therefore part of the mystery that we are trying to solve. Mm, That's beautiful. And I love that because it really does coincide with everything you've been saying. Your work, naturopathy, the psychotherapy, body psychotherapy, and what you incorporate into your personal life, Mm. which is that connection and everything else that goes along with it. So I just pulled, I read it. I thought, wow, that's, um, I thought it was quite significant. That's a lovely one. Thank you, Sha. No, that's all right. So is there anything else you want to add before we go into our four out random question? (laughs) Well, I guess, I guess like anything, and I think it's if anyone is looking for a naturopath or a psychotherapist, or I think, it always comes back to, again, connection. It's just, is this the right person for me? And it's okay to go, actually, this is not the right naturopath, uh, but actually there might be someone else that is. And, and it's just remembering that there are different individuals with, that are going to offer you different things. So, yeah. Such a good point. As you know yourself, sometimes, um, you know, you might not see people again and you think, oh, how did they actually get on? So, exactly. And, so and then sometimes you're in Sainsbury's looking for the right blueberries and somebody taps you <laughs> on the shoulder to say, I stopped smoking. <laughs> you, we do get those as well. It's so interesting. <laughs> so it's time, viewers, to put a fork in it. You know, I've got this segment, Far Out Random Question. And I've got my little bowl here. So I'm just going to pick one. And let's see what Debbie has to say. Here we go. What have you recently realized you've been doing wrong? Oh, that's really interesting. I guess exercise was an interesting one for me, actually. I think what I was always doing wrong was, I don't know, it was such a chore. And and I, you know, sometimes I'd love it. Sometimes I had hate it. And and I've just come to the conclusion recently that actually it's just the joy, the joy of my body moving and that my body can do these, um, these things and, um, and that it's fun and it doesn't have to look a certain way. So I think that's been quite an amazing revelation to kind of go, this is one of the best things for my health is just to have fun um, in the joy of my body moving, not what it looks like or, yeah. Right. So what you're really saying is all these exercises, they may help some people, but actually mm-hmm. it could be, it's not always right. Sometimes you just yeah. have to move and flow and just, it's how your body moves. Yep. How your body moves and the joy that you get out of moving. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. 
Excellent. Yeah, I, I get that. Definitely. <laughs> I was saying to someone the other day, they were saying, oh, I'm doing this yoga thing, but it's not working. You know, I said, well, what, what are you expecting? Uh, and they were saying, well, I was expecting to get rid of all my worries and my anxieties. And I said, you know, you can do all the downward dogs you want. But if <laughs> yeah. you don't, <laughs> you don't address the mind part, mind, body, yeah. soul, the downward dogs are just movement. It's just a downward yeah. dog. <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> interesting stuff. Debbie, thank you, thank you, thank you. Listeners, I will put all of Debbie's information in the uh, description. She is on Instagram, guys, but I will put all the links below. And please do, if you're looking for a, a body psychotherapist, if you're looking to look at your microbiome system, if you're looking for a natural path, Debbie is lady to see. I know you're in Essex, but are you? how are you working at the moment? Is it just online or... <clears throat> At the moment, it's online, um, unfortunately, mainly because of uh, I was working in London over the over the pandemic and that stopped. And I'm just looking for a local clinic, actually. So hopefully not too far okay. for that one. But in the meantime, it's all online. Perfect. Excellent. Which I know a lot of people are used to anyway. So mm. all the information will be down below. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks so Amazing. much, Debbie. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Michelle. I'll see you soon. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, email me at inquire at theinquisitiverin.com. That's E-N-Q-U-I-R-E at theinquisitiverin.com. Be sure to check all social media, especially the Facebook page, for new topics and new interests. And if you're an expert in the field, I'd love to hear from you. Or if you'd just like to have a chat, contact me. Let's get you on the show. Now. Let's get back to the show. Thanks so much for joining me today. Be sure to follow on all podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. Also, check all social media, especially the Facebook page, as there'll be new topics listed and new guests. And also Twitter will always have the new and upcoming episodes. But make sure you subscribe so that you never miss an episode. See you soon.